My name is Ros Savage and I'm a British ocean rower and environmental campaigner. And something I've been thinking a lot about recently is about how we need to redefine success. I think for many decades now, we've pictured the successful person as being the one with the big house and the cars and all the toys. It's a very materialistic definition of success. And yet I'm convinced that money and possessions do not bring happiness. And I'm speaking very personally about this. I grew up in quite a poor family. My parents were both Methodist preachers, which is not something you go into for the money. And so as a child, the grass was very much greener on the other side of the fence. I wanted to have money and the big house and all the stuff. And so for 11 years, I worked hard as a management consultant in London and was fortunate enough to acquire many of those things only to find that I'd been wrong, that actually having all this stuff just wasn't making me happy. And I went through a phase of radical simplification. I um, really got rid of all of my stuff and just pared life down to the absolute basics. And what that allowed to come into my life was a sense of purpose and passion. And this was at the point when I, I had my environmental epiphany and started rowing across oceans to raise environmental awareness and I found that the sense of satisfaction and, and happiness that I got from really being in tune with my life purpose made me <laughs> so many times happier than I had been with all of the material goodies. And I think this is a really important idea for us to explore in the concept of sustainability because while we maintain the idea of materialistic success as being the definition of success, we just have no chance of creating a sustainable future. Even as it is, we're in overshoot on the Earth's resources. We already need one and a half Earths to support the seven billion people. If everybody lived like Americans, sorry to beat up on the Americans, but just as an example, we would actually need five Earths to support us all. So that clearly can't continue in the long term. And in fact, psychologists have shown, uh, as I found out for myself, that our happiness really doesn't come from material things. About 50% of our happiness is our natural set point of happiness, whether we're naturally a cup half full or cup half empty kind of person. About 40% of it comes from the choices that we make, the priorities that we put on, on friends, uh, finding a life purpose, the kind of work that we do. And only 10%, a tiny little wedge of the pie, is about our material circumstances. So at the moment we're trashing the earth and it's not even making us happy. And I'm not saying that everybody should change their lives the way that I have, but I just want to kind of challenge the messages that we tend to get from particularly the advertising industry, where we are sold this myth that if we buy certain things then our lives are going to be perfect and our kids are going to be well behaved and we're all going to look like supermodels. It's obviously just not true and yet we keep buying and buying and consuming and consuming in our misguided quest for happiness. So I just kind of like to debunk that myth that uh, happiness comes from materialism and say why not just explore, experiment with the idea that maybe real happiness comes from the intangibles, from having a simpler life and allowing space there to focus on the things that really, really matter in life. It's amazing how much time it saves you when you don't have to earn the money to buy things, buy the things, maintain the things, transport the things. It really, for me personally, I've found that it's really made life just so much better. So I would commend that lifestyle to you. At least try it. What have you got to lose? Thank you.